9.9, but just <laughs> wanting to check. Order, order. Gareth Johnson to move the motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I beg to move that this House has considered uh, freehold and leasehold reform. Um, I'd like to centre my remarks around the issue of management companies and the fees that they charge to those who live on newer housing estates. This is a big and growing issue in my constituency, and I want to, uh, to talk to the House about some of the uh, practices of the management companies the most, uh, that behave in the most appalling way, not just with the services that they provide, but also with the fees that they charge to the homeowners uh, on the estates that they're responsible for. Um, we have a large number of affected people in my constituency, which is perhaps not surprising, given that some 7,000 new houses have been built in Dartford over the last 10 years. Management fees are imposed on homeowners, whatever their tenancy, in order to pay for the upkeep of communal areas and other amenities. And Mr Sharma, it is hard for me to actually overstate how big an issue the conduct of management companies actually is. Since announcing this debate, I've had email after email from local residents at their wits end complaining about the practices of management companies. Indeed, around 20 to 25 per cent of people attending my surgeries are there to raise the experiences that they've actually had. The stories that they have provided to me uh, the practices of these management companies are quite frankly shocking. The central allegation is that developers retain ownership of the land once a house is built and then create a company or use an existing company um, of the land to, to actually, uh, sorry, to sell the, the land to so that they can actually have the right to be the management company of the actual estate. And this is carried out without consultation at all with the homeowners, or anybody else for that matter. Um, and it's carried out without sufficient regulation. And what's central to my speech today is asking the government to bring in the necessary legislation that so once and for all we can deal with this growing problem in the country. Because what often happens is that I, companies are set, uh, either set up or used to implement the work or to liaise with residents, therefore creating several tiers of companies for the homeowner to deal with. Mr Chalmers, take the Bridge Community uh, Estates in Dartford. The local councillor there, Clement Kwakumi, has raised the plight that the local residents suffer from. It is a nightmare for the residents to deal with and because the British community is divided roughly half and half between businesses and residents, the residents end up paying huge amounts of money, uh, huge amounts of money for receiving little more than landscaping services. Money they have no alternative than to pay as they're committed through the service charge deed that they have signed. And these contracts are the source of the commitment the homeowner actually has. People unwittingly signed up to the contracts without fully understanding the implications of them. Particularly at times when it is a seller's market, people are desperate to buy their dream home, never expecting for management companies to hike their fees up with little notice. And yet, when this is challenged, it soon becomes clear that the homeowners can do little or nothing about it. We simply cannot allow homeowners to continue being treated in this way. I had a constituent contact me yesterday to say they're actually charged two and a half thousand pounds a year, and two and a half thousand pounds a year for an extremely poor service. These fees are in addition to the council tax, which still has to be paid in full by the homeowners. And the homeowners understandably resent having to pay both council tax and to pay separately for the maintenance of roads, pavements and play parks, which of course can all be accessed by the general public free of charge. And so, Mr Sharma, it's 
really a problem that has to be addressed and has to be addressed soon. On Ingress Park, another estate in my constituency, I've had residents contact me to say that a beautiful place living, and it is a beautiful place, is spoiled by the charges that are imposed upon uh, the homeowners. Um, it makes the properties harder to sell, uh, and it creates bureaucracy that strangles the people that actually are living there. They complain of the accounts not adding up. And accounts, if and when they're able to obtain them. Again and again, I receive complaints from residents who are asking for accounts to show what their, their money's been used for, and they're not able to actually obtain those. Though residents there have also complained of contractors clocking in late and leaving early, with nothing being done whatsoever to check their behaviour. But one of the worst instances that I've dealt with was in a road called Winston Close in Stone in my constituency. Here residents were given just two months' notice that their annual fee was going to rise from just under £2,000 to just under £6,000 to pay for windows to be replaced. Now, to be fair to the management company that is in place there, they did relent on this and phased it out over a longer period of time where the windows would be replaced. But it still led to huge increases for local residents, a lot of stress, a lot of upset there. And had that original demand been persisted with, the residents there would have had no option whatsoever other than to pay. It was an instance that clearly illustrates what is wrong with the current system of management fees. The management company there quite literally can treble the amount they have to pay with little or no notice, and the residents have no alternative other than to cop up. A constituent also contacted me from Castle Hill in the Ebbsfleet Garden uh, City. And, and he relayed to me that they've had their fee increase by 30% recently. And yet, as a freeholder, he does not have access to any dispute resolution tribunal. And so just has to take the increase on the chin. This cannot be right, and it's a practice that has to end. On Bexley Park in my constituency, I met with residents there who have managed to secure over 50% of residents in agreement that they should remove themselves from their management company and go to another. No mean feat, I'm sure you would agree, to actually get over 50% of residents signing up to say, we no longer want to use our management company, we want to transfer to a different one. However, the management company very cleverly said to them, that's absolutely fine, but we want hundreds of pounds off of you and every single householder has to pay that money before they will, able, they will allow them to transfer. An absolutely impossible hurdle for them to achieve, and the management company knows this. We have to make it easy for residents to move to another management company and thereby end the monopoly that management companies enjoy over homeowners. There is no competition at the moment because residents are stuck with their management company that has no incentive whatsoever to improve its services or provide value for money. Another constituent from Stone told me that they questioned some workmen in their communal area who were there changing four of the fluorescent light fittings that were there. It turned out that those workmen had travelled from Leeds to Kent to do, to do that uh, job and were charging over £400 in order to do it. And what was quite clear is that that lady could do absolutely nothing about this. There in front of her was a clear example of the abuse that is meted out on homeowners um, in some of these newer housing estates um, by sending someone from such a long distance away to carry out a fairly straightforward job and charging an exorbitant amount of money to do it. Residents from the old Stonehouse Hospital site uh, in my constituency, which is comprised, I understand it, of, uh, just purely of leasehold dwellings, they contacted me to complain that the freeholder was forever changing and rarely caring at all about problems on the development. And another problem with the system we have at the moment is that there is little or no cooperation between management companies 
Um, on some estates in my constituency, there are two or even more management companies that operate on a particular uh, estate. And so you end up with a situation where separate people come to mow the grass, one at one end of the estate, another at the other end of the estate, when that job could have been carried out by one individual mowing the whole estate. And so therefore that lack of cooperation illustrates the poor value for money. And, and these instances, Mr Sharma, just go on and on and on. I could fill the whole 90 minutes of this debate with those uh, issues that have been raised with me about poor value for money, uh, exorbitant fees and the unfair, unjust system that we are currently existing under. I genuinely believe that developers and management companies are taking advantage of what the public conceive as what a freehold actually is. Because understandably, people believe that a freehold will give them full control over their property, when actually the reality on these newer estates is very, very different. So-called so -called freeholders are not only being forced to pay these charges, but also when it comes to selling the property, they're having to effectively ask permission from the management companies to do so. And also having to pay a fee to those management companies for a kind of seller's pack of information to be given to them. And one lady contacted me to say that when she questioned the management company over the contents of her selling pack, they responded by saying each and every query that she raises with them is going to be charged at £60 plus VAT. Yet the ironic thing is, is she was questioning them about mistakes made by the management company in that selling pack. And she was being charged £60 plus VAT for every inquiry that she raised with them. And so this system of having to ask permission from the management company simply causes delay and unnecessary costs and, of course, extra profit for the management company. People also have no say in the running of the management company or input as to what the priority should be for that <laughs> estate. Whatever the management company wants for that estate is then done to the residents who live there. There's no way of avoiding these exorbitant fees, no right to challenge, and no conceivable way of changing the management company. It is a license for these companies to print money, quite frankly. And if we do not legislate quickly, we will create a legacy that will stay with the British housing sector for generations to come. We should not allow people to be treated in this way for simply wanting a nice new home to live in. Yeah.